Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays Kerbal Space Program, where we've been, like, well, I wouldn't say we've been crushing it, but dude, we crushed it on this episode. Um, we managed to land on Minmus, just a couple of maneuver notes, plant a flag, get a lot of science. Is there an indicator that shows us how much science we've got on us right now? That's how much we've got at base. Maybe, maybe not. I guess if we review stored data, perhaps? I mean, that's just the, the surface sample alone is worth 150, so, um... No, don't discard that. Huh? Keep experiment. Well, this episode, it, it should be relatively simple. Essentially, we are going to, uh, or our goal, rather, is to exit Minmus, fly around, slingshot at like an apoapsis around this angle, roughly like right here, accelerate, get on a, I wouldn't say a collision course, but a, a an appropriate apoapsis with, uh, and periapsis actually, with carbon, re-enter and hopefully recover all this science. So I'm gonna quick save just in case it all goes terribly wrong. Um, generally speaking, you, uh, take off from a planet, or a, again, a celestial body, and you go east. East is this direction. Now, it might be different because of the fact that we're, uh, on a planet that has essentially a bit of a plainly tilted orbit relative to Kerbin, but I'm gonna adhere to the idea that that's probably a sensible approach regardless. Um, we got a decent amount of fuel remaining. It should not be difficult for us to leave uh, Minmus. Minmus has like no pull. So, I mean, that's, again, our apoapsis there is, 175,000 is probably too high. Our next game plan here would be to add a maneuver, accelerate at prograde. And, I mean, I think this is honestly fine. We're going to burn for three seconds. That's essentially no fuel. And um, what this is going to do, and we, we could probably even do it a lot faster, but um, what this is going to do is put us into... A stable orbit around Minmus. At our periapsis, we're gonna, I mean, we should probably do it at apoapsis, but um, we're gonna accelerate on the prograde marker, and that should escape Minmus and hopefully lead to us being recaptured by Kerbin. I mean, we weigh a lot less than Minmus, and Minmus is captured by Kerbin, so I think we got a good chance, as long as we're moving uh, towards Kerbin as opposed to, you know, out of its sphere of influence and possibly getting captured by the sun or something. So let's go on like times 100 time for the time being, and. Um, Probably used a little bit too much fuel escaping from Minmus. That's okay. 35 minutes remaining here. We want to burn with essentially T minus one second. And I, I believe our, um, our maneuver node will essentially be overlapping with our prograde marker at that time. So it might be for the best to just look at the prograde marker. Maybe not. They're like slightly off. It really should not matter. Okay, I'm... We whiffed it ever so slightly. But better to whiff it uh, into the direction of making a stable orbit than the opposite. So then, at periapsis, add maneuver, burn prograde. That's probably a little too much. Um, we enter an orbit around the sun. Not ideal, in my opinion. I think. Yeah, so we gotta actually go back here, burn retrograde. That's an orbit around the sun. That's a curb and escape. It's a curb and periapsis. Maybe we can burn retrograde even more just to K that around. Okay, so you see we got something decent going on here. This is definitely the part that I need um, the most work on in case that's not like as clear as day. So, okay, step one. Create your own Minmus, basically. So we're going to become Minmus here. In uh, one hour, we're going to burn for 11 seconds. Still plenty of fuel, I think. 
<laughs> I hope. Where are you going here? No, no, no. Go to the retrograde marker for now. This will at least get us into a position where theoretically we could be recaptured. The worst case scenario at this point, like being in space from an engineering perspective, with in Kerbal Space Program at least, is pretty safe. Um, like we're not going to explode in outer space unless we hit something. So I think our uh, our basic kind of idea right now is if we don't have enough fuel to get back to Kerbin, we'll leave Jeb, uh, Jeb up here for a, an eventual rescue mission and we'll be able to at least transmit the data back to Kerbin and we'll get like, I don't know, maybe, maybe like 70 total science, which would be a super bummer, but I got to hope. We still got a decent amount of fuel. So we're just going to wait until i mean t minus five seconds is roughly where we want to be here it's going to take a little while to get there but it's better if i just distract myself by talking than if we uh try to go to speed a thousand and literally you know it's like trying to stop on a dime wouldn't recommend it okay so i'm really hopeful that this is going to be like one of our first successful like truly successful no reverting no um no reloading, uh, Kerbin, or not Kerbin, sorry, Minmus missions. Like, this was, you probably wouldn't say textbook, but at least, you know, good enough to get, like, a C-plus in the class, I think. You know, if I went into my final, and I was anxious about how I was doing in the class, and I had this rocket launch right here, I would be like, you know what, I passed. I might not get an A-plus-plus, plus. I might not get a job offer just on my performance here, but... I know that I'm going to pass based on the fact that we handled things around Minmus relatively well. Landed first try. And now, uh, you know, did all the science I think we had available at the time as well. So let's delete this maneuver. We're now in like a garbage uh, orbit. We're going to warp ahead 17 days here. Get to Periapsis. Then we're going to burn retrograde at Periapsis. The, the final steps here, I believe, I think that they're easy. You get, you, you burn retrograde at Periapsis until your Periapsis on the other side becomes, because your Apoapsis will eventually decay below your current Periapsis, which will become your Apoapsis. And you get the idea. Um, it will become 30,000 meters or less. And then you should be okay to just survive. We also learned a little bit two episodes ago um, about... Just get this going here for a second before I get talking too much. Um, we, you can slow yourself down fairly well at around like 100,000 meters depending on how much fuel you've got left. Increase your odds of survival, maybe. 206. 125. Should make this our target. 99,000. We could always just slow our maneuver down. Like, we could not go at full throttle at that stage. Just be patient. This is patience. Two thousand. That's a little low. We could still crash into a mountain. Forty-three thousand. Now you're speaking my language. Forty thousand. Twenty-nine. I mean, that's pretty solid. So in two seconds, we're gonna burn. Sorry, in two hours, we're gonna burn for twenty-eight seconds. Do we have twenty-eight seconds worth of fuel remaining on this bad boy? We have so much fuel remaining. I know we're pointing. Um, I know we're pointing retrograde right now. That's because we're going to burn retrograde in two hours. I really thought it was going to take roughly as much time to get back from Minmus as it would to get there. Which is foolish now that I think about it. Because a lot of this time uh, is spent in time warp. Um, but we're going to do some stuff once we land anyway. I think there's still improvements that we can make to this uh, to this design. And I'm, I haven't even talked about it. I meant to talk about it like right at the top of this episode. But... Dude, 
I'm so excited by the idea that Jeb might be a level 2 astronaut when we come back. He's worked hard for this. Gosh darn it. I think I need to work on my... Basically, that's so I can just point at maneuver nodes without having to worry about it. Even though most of our maneuver nodes are just pointed prograde or retrograde to begin with. Either way, I uh, also should get better at using maneuver nodes. Why do I always go full throttle, zero throttle, when we can instead just go, you know, slowly degrade the throttle until we hit the, the point at which it's actually good? Either way, we, we basically nailed that, which was kind of a big surprise to me. See, I'm trying to use more fine grain throttle control now. Might have messed up, uh, messed up our timing a little bit, I guess, but... Two, one, <laughs> zero. Periaps is 56. So we just want to burn retrograde for like a little bit longer. That seems fine to me. Good time for a quick save. All right. Um, so the final step, I don't even know if we have to do this. But I'm going to do it. Regardless, at about a hundred and something thousand meters, I'm going to start to slow us down. The difference is, um, it, it's twofold, and I don't know if it's a good twofold. But, what are we at now? Two, two million meters up. Um, the difference is, we'll slow ourselves down, which is good, but we'll come in at a hotter angle. Like, we'll be straight up or straight down. Which we don't want, uh, admittedly. But what's... What's better, to fall straight down at like two-thirds the speed or at an angle at 100% of the speed? I'm being 100% honest with you when I say that I don't know. And that's why we're doing experimentation here. I know, and I'm getting tweets from people. This is where you're going to encounter a little, you know, NL stubbornness. I'm getting tweets from people that say, just dump the fuel and land. But I'm also, you know, having done what we did during our escape, or sorry, our rescue mission two episodes ago... We learned that, uh, at least through our one experiment that we did, which might not be indicative of the whole, that uh, slowing ourselves down seemed to have, like, a really good effect. I thought at least it seemed to have a good effect. Um, it was the only time that we actually succeeded at, at not being destroyed. But we'll see. Again, this could be wrong. That's why I did the quick save. Now, unless I misplaced the heat shield, which I'm looking at, and I don't think I did. Um, but unless I misplace the heat shield, which is there, um, we should... There should be no reason we can't land this. Especially now, you know, we're getting low in the atmosphere. Admittedly, the air is going to start to get a little thicker, but um, we'll slow ourselves down. Hopefully, because we do want to like cut throttle before we get rid of all this fuel. So hopefully, you know, we, we manage to burn through as much of it as conceivable to slow ourselves down before we hit like 100,000 meters. Although it seems unlikely. Um, we'll cut throttle, get rid of that point retrograde, and our heat shield should go the distance for us. I think. Just remember to cut throttle before you jettison this lander stage. Because if you don't do that, you're going to eat it so bad. You're going to be attached to like a cruise missile that's is going in a direction you might not you know, want it to go in. We're still not in the thicker air yet. Around 70,000, I guess, is where that happens. Done a really good job of slowing ourselves down. You remember when hitting an apoapsis of uh, 100,000 meters was like, oh my god. This rocket design is really good. The asparagus staging from Quill has, has saved us. So, I mean, at this point, we should be fine. Straight up, uh, cut throttle, jettison, see you later. It's clear to me um, that we don't need those batteries now.
we're gonna speed up a little bit. If we're going under 2,000 meters per second when we start re-entry though, I'm gonna feel pretty good about this. Which is basically what's happened. I think we're gonna be totally fine. We're going at like a great speed. And we were already slowing down. We're going to be fine. There's no like, maybe about it. We did lose our science module and our service bay. Really? The heat shield blew up during re-entry there? You know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is hua. Hua. So we should probably transmit our data. Cause like, what do you have stored? Ow, oh, I mean, we're gonna get 150 science, but we lost all the science that we had in our service bay. I guess I'll, I'll accept that as collateral damage, even though it does cheese me a little bit. I get, here's, I'll, I'll meet you halfway here in terms of like, cr recreating some faith in the NL system. I don't know if we've ever landed in the, in the desert planet of Tatooine here, so. We're gonna land, and then we're gonna go speed one. And we're going to say, hey, dude, why don't you, like, EVA? You might as well let go. You might as well plant a flag. Because you get experience for planting the flag. And this one will be called, like, Strut Co. Now owns this land. Tribute to Esteban. One day I will own this place. Take surface sample. Dude, keep it. EVA report. Keep it. Get back, just because I don't want you to be stranded in the desert here. Board. Recover vessel. So we completed two contracts. We're going to get a, some science. Like a decent amount. 198 science earned. Pretty good. Almost all of that came from... Uh, came from the surface sample from Minmus. But still... Um, and then the recovery of a vessel returned from the service of Minmus. Eh, we, we lost a little bit of money. Jeb advanced to level two. I'm going to take that as a pretty roaring success here, to be honest with you. So what else do we have here? Test some landing gear. Dude, at this point, plant flag on Minmus? What's your problem? At this point, um, to do a mission that gives us like 20 science 15 science it seems like garbage it seems like why would we ever waste our time doing a mission that could give us 20 science when landing on a planet will give us like a trillion right um not a trillion obviously it's a little needlessly incorrect but um we can at least get one extra level of science i mean i don't know if we want to go for flight what does specialized construction give us we haven't built space planes in a while so docking ports, that seems smart um, to eventually possibly be able to work on um, on uh, rescuing our units that are in... I guess we could... <laughs> if, I'm just running it through my head right now. We don't need to dock in order to rescue a unit. We could just... If they're trapped in orbit around the moon, for example, we could do an orbital spacewalk and have them jump in orbit and then have them grab the ladder of our ship. It seems like I definitely, I mean, I want to do that, but I don't want to do it. But I want to be forced to do it, I guess. Um, I'd rather just catch them somehow. So this is like a better ladder, I think. It's another better ladder. Precision engineering. Better struts. Advanced electronics. Uh, we haven't really messed around with photovoltaic panels or anything like that yet. Maybe some safer... Uh, some safer service bays. I mean, honestly, if we could get a safer service bay, it would probably pay for itself. And we could start building, like, Rocco Max rockets with the service bay safe, I guess. But air brakes. Research into feasible ways to slow down a plane in midair show that loose hull panels are pretty great as drag... Include inducing deceleration mechanisms. Okay, whatever you say. Um, well, I mean, the obvious choice right now would be, uh, you know, to just go for fuel. We know we always want better fuel. We always want more engines, although I never use these ones. 
toroidal fuel tank, separatron, specialized control, advanced reaction wheels. Well, I haven't used any of those at all. Supersonic flight. Um, I'm not trying to sing the circle of life. I can't stop for some reason. Well, maybe we should hold off. I mean, probably it's it has never seemed to be a bad idea for us to go for uh for for us to go for either fuel or propulsion. Like those always have a use. Advanced grabbing unit. How to extract dropped tools from complicated machinery. Why not turn the rocket parts upside down and shake them? The grabbing arm perfectly filled this niche and is capable of lifting heavy machinery. But yeah, where are we, what are we going to do with the Canada arm once we, put, once we get something in its, in its grasp? Tell you what. I'm going to go for command modules for now. Even though it doesn't push us towards rovers, I think it's a decent idea. The idea there being that... Um, we can use it to... It just It's going to make our rockets strictly better. Or at least give us more options. Build a new surface outpost on the moon. I'd have, I've got no idea how to do this. I think we should just complete like a simple contract here. Like... Test this landing gear on the surface of the moon. I got no problem doing that. Although then we have to return. <laughs> Conduct observational surveys of Minmus. I don't really want to do that. Plant flag on Minmus? I mean, that's easy. That's no problem. You know what? Let's just finally get this done. Test spider liquid fuel engine on a suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. I'm ready. So a suborbital trajectory is 280 to 290,000 meters. I'm going to... This is a old school Northern Lion episode here. So we're going to save this. Equipment I know rescue. That gets like a gold star. It's had a successful mission. This is like... I don't know why I'm even doing this one. To be honest with you. But let's do it regardless. So let's put a... Previously we've been using the Mark 1 command pod. Let's use the Mark 2 now. I don't know. We can probably look at its parameters. It's got some built-in mono propellant. Much more. It's got three times the electric charge. Weighs a lot more. Tolerates like three times the impact. Slightly better at uh, temperature control or temperature handling. And it also has uh, a crew capacity of three instead of a crew capacity of one. Meaning we could use this for rescue missions. So I, already I'm like, I'm pleased with this. And then we'll just put, I mean not this because that, oh wait, no the XL parachute will totally work. Sure, why not? It's three times heavier, but what do we care? All right, so essentially we just want to get to 280,000 meters up and then 280 to 290, then we use a spider engine. So how do we do this? Well, what is the spider engine? It sucks. Yeah, this, this looks like garbage. So essentially I am going to put one fuel tank, probably not Rocco Max. Oh no, wait, 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 hold up a second. Oh, we're building like straight up Rocco Max style right now. Rocco's Modern Max. Rocco's Modern Max. I'm I'm sorry. Um We're going pretty high up. So like put a heat shield under this thing. This is I mean admittedly just to get this contract out of my interface and then we can work on uh something perhaps a little bit more uh Difficult in the next episode, like maybe start talking about satellites or something like that. Recall this uh, engine section is essentially the intention is not for it to do anything at all. Um, we could work up like some asparagus staging real quick. This thing's going to be unbelievably light. So just we should be able to do this like by hand at this point. Yeah, we don't want those. We want these. So we just have to get to 280 to 290,000 meters on a suborbital trajectory. What do we know works for getting uh, pretty high pretty fast? <laughs> well, I guess we could use mainsails. Do they gimbal? They do gimbal. This might be enough by itself here. And in fact, if it is enough by itself, why, why break the bank here, right? 
set up some super low symmetrical things here. Um, it might not be able to get us that. We're just going to find out, basically, if this is going to work. This is not, I don't intend for this to necessarily work right off the bat. Uh, Untitled Spacecraft already exists. This is just going to be spider test. And these are going to fire. You're going to decouple. You're going to fire. Then you're going to decouple. And who's our crew? Jeb? Jeb's crushing it. Oh, you, you don't need three crew for this. Straight up. Launch it up. 280 to 290. That's the only thing we want to accomplish in this episode. Let's see the power of the mainsail engine. Look, dude, he's got normal, anti-normal, radial, radi radial out, radial in. No maneuver node yet, but one day. One day, dude. It's so quiet. I think we're going to need more fuel. But this is just a beautiful creature right now. And suborbital, we don't have to... We want our apoapsis to climb as quickly as possible. Uh, so we actually don't care about a gravity turn. Because we don't want a 280,000 apoapsis at like a 45 degree angle. Because that that's a, represents a lot of fuel wasted moving us in the X direction instead of just uh, straight ahead. So I don't know. I mean, we, we've already got an Apple Apps of 21,000. Suppose I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this has the capability to possibly get us up to like a hundred and something. We've only used like half of our fuel so far, but yeah, a couple of uh, a couple of stages of asparagus on this thing, and it might be. Uh, it might be good to go. And who knows, maybe this will make the foundation for like the next fleet of rockets in our uh, in our collection here. So now that we're up around 30,000 meters, air is getting a little thinner. Let's hit the throttle, see how high one uh, phase of this with our existing thrust to weight ratio can go. It's getting up there, dude. It might, it's gonna be close. It might actually hit 280, 290. You know, every unit of fuel burned at this point gets us, like, further than we've gotten before. So our apoapsis is, like, mildly decaying. But it, it should not decay enough for us to not make it. Dude, I'm very surprised that this appears to have worked out completely fine. So, I mean, should just dump this off? Sorry, planet Earth. It's going to create quite the mess when it comes back down. I'll give you that. Give me some speed, please. Um, well, let's, let's pause briefly. Are we on a suborbital trajectory? We are. So basically, at once we hit 280 to 290,000 meters, we should just hit test on these engines. So um, this, this should be like the easiest contract to complete ever, which would cap off like a two-episode arc that's been as successful as anyone we've ever had in Kerbal Space Program. Any second. Yeah, so test. Contract complete. Uh, so the, what's the final step? I mean, get on retrograde. The idea is, uh, well, I mean, we don't want to be on retrograde yet, actually. Wait till you cross apoapsis. Then, probably like to slow yourself down. And you can tell, I mean, these engines are garbage. But they're also going to last for infinity years. Why is only one of these engines firing? There we go. It, it doesn't need to speed us up. Or sorry, to, to slow us down. If it just slows down the rate at which we re-enter the atmosphere, am I going to be happy? Uh, probably not, but... Like, definitely not, but... 
Oh, okay, so they stopped because I was undergoing acceleration. That's my bad. Dude, just brick them. Get out of here. I don't want to see you anymore. Just land it, dude. You got the skills, Jeb. You're not going that fast. You got a thick heat shield on this bad boy. Could be an easy way to cap off this episode if you live. He's gonna be fine. That's our other rocket parts. He's okay. The parachutes popped. Dude, I'm actually very pleased. We've, we've got one contract left. We might even be able to complete it. There might be someone left on the moon right now that we could... I don't think there is, but... The whole point is, uh, we did... We, the last two episodes were very successful. Cleared out some contracts. Okay, I don't know what exploded there, like our heat shield or something. Um, I don't know what exploded. Either way, get out here. We are... I put the sign... I'm mad. I had the speed on speed four, so the science messed up, and he didn't get to... Okay, well, that's going to do it for this episode of Kerbal Space Program. I'm sorry, Jeb. Either way, we know that this will work. I might even just kill the contract at this point, because I don't care. We, we succeeded in our learning exercise. I don't care if we get full marks for it. Um, we'll be back to maybe work on something more intense in Kerbal Space Program, I guess. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'm a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.